right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Uh, joining you from beautiful San Diego. And today I'm joined by Shannon Lee, who's up in beautiful Seattle. How are you doing, Shannon? I'm doing great. It's great to be with you today, John. <laughs> yeah. And Shannon's the Director of Coaching at Win Without Pitching. Her focus is on empowering cre creative professionals to have more confidence in the sale. Okay, so let's face it. When it comes to sale, one of the first things people always talk about is the pitch, right? What's your sales <laughs> pitch? How can you make yes. your pitch better? How can you make your sales better? And your, um, your organization is all about win without pitching. So why not pitch? Yep. So as you said, it's right there in our name, our perspective, win without pitching. We think that there is a better way to get it done. We think that there's a way to position yourself as the expert and command the high ground in the sale and lead in the sale and be in the service of helping that client really achieve a better desired future state and carve out value for them, which the delightful consequences you carve out value for yourself. If you mm -hmm. follow, if you follow that thinking. But a lot of people and a lot of salespeople kind of struggle with the open, you know, with the engagement at the very beginning. So they feel like that's where they need to, use their pitch if you like and and they may yeah. say well it's not really a pitch because i've made it mine over the years and I, I understand the different types of people i'm dealing with so i know how to how to um you know make it fit for the for the right audience but they're still relying on the pitch yep yeah and the way that we really look at things is in those early stages of the sale i think when people are feeling the most nervous or the most vulnerable or falling back on bad habits. We really are working with our clients to help them just be more courageous and have an initial qualifying conversation, for example, to see how they can help and to really do a good job of listening and uncovering that prospect's wants beyond their needs and really identifying what are the obstacles they're going to have to overcome to achieve those outcomes. And how might I be of service as the agency you're looking at to really help and not sell in those early conversations. Your job isn't to sell. Your job is to see if you can help vet and then decide if you're going to take a next step together. Yeah. And I think part of the problem is uh, some people like struggle with that uh, a concept of facilitating a conversation and and especially and if you take it okay uh, especially since uh, all of the uh, the pandemic and all the things that are going on a lot of people are doing it more virtually than ever before yeah. and so i think they struggle even more with this concept of of facilitating a conversation you know as opposed to you know just uh, just um pitching as you say and and i think mm -hmm. part of that is that they get caught up in this idea of i somehow have to fill the silence yeah so that is one of our principles, um, the ability to embrace silence. So I'll just mm -hmm. talk about that for a second and come yeah. back and address a little bit more of your question. But the ability to embrace silence is an amazing superpower. And it really only requires you to just be quiet a little bit longer than that person that you're having the conversation with. So you do have to like muster a little bravery there. But in that silence, there is so much learning that can happen. And if you race to fill the silence, you find yourself acquiescing, giving in, making assumptions, just charging past information that you should be learning early in the sale so that it doesn't get derailed later in the sale because you didn't do your homework. And so we love the idea of embracing silence. And I actually have a little card that I carry around with me to all of our workshops when they used to be in real life anyway, um, that says, stop talking. And I encourage all of my clients to keep it with them and just remind themselves, ask your question and stop talking. Yeah. And hey, I think that could be good advice to uh, well beyond sales right now. So a lot yes. of people maybe do be less talking and more listening. But, but to, your, to, to, to your point though, um, about it, it's amazing. It's always been amazing to me how scary silence is to some people. And also we live in this crazy culture where, uh, and I guess it's something that I, I studied, let me put it another way, right? I, I, way back in the day, you know, I did a master's in communication back in Ireland, right? And studied uh, European cinema versus American cinema and TV and whatever. And, and one of the biggest, one of the biggest uh, differences was that 
U.S. Uh, cinema that did not allow for silence, did not allow for many breaks in dialogue, right? You had to have, so big, long silences and big no-nos in U.S. cinema. You ever watch French uh, or whatever cinema, you'll find like long silences. Yeah. But so we've got, so we brought up in a, so we're kind of, and it's gotten worse uh, with, with the whole, you know, culture we live in now with social media, which it seems like silence is so anathema to everything. And so it, it's almost a skill that we have to relearn. I think you're right. It takes practice. Any any of the work that you're doing as a sales professional, I think, is hard earned and takes a lot of repetitions and takes a lot of practice and takes your ability to just really find your confidence and also like sit in the messiness and tension of what mm. sales conversations can feel like, honestly, and be okay with that. And I think mindset is really critical. Being able to give yourself five or 10 minutes before you go into a sales conversation to get your head in the right place can be really just an amazing gift to give to yourself because you may not remember all of the process of sales or techniques that you've learned, but if you go in with the right mindset of, I'm here mm -hmm. to see if I can help. If I can't, it's okay. Everyone isn't going to follow. We don't want to work with everyone. That's okay. You're going to go in and your behavior is going to be more correct as a result. And you're going to do things like, listen, stop talking, ask questions when your gut tells you to speak up. So I think mindset proceeds even thinking about some of those other principles that we talk about, like silence and embracing silence. Yeah, and I love, I just making notes here, I just loved uh, that idea of you know, city, sitting in the messiness, because let's face it, you're correct. I mean, every situation is different at a ten, you know, and they can, they can get messy. But we also sometimes like force this ideal on ourselves as if it should go, you know, very smoothly and according to plan. And I think that idea that you just said of being, being okay with it going a little astray, going a little awry, something coming that you're not really expecting, almost, almost embracing that is a better approach, isn't it? Almost expecting it and say, listen, I've done my planning. I've prepared as well as I could, as well as I can. I'm in the right headspace. But hey, something comes from left field. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Yeah, you just, I think in those moments, it's also okay for you to be silent, for you to, if that yeah. question comes from left field, to just say, you know, let me think about that for a minute, mm -hmm. or yeah. I don't have an answer, let me get back <laughs> to you, right? Like, we're all human, and those natural instincts we have, we really should honor a whole lot more in these conversations, because it is mm -hmm. just a conversation with somebody else who has a problem, and we got to figure out if together we can take a step forward and, and help each other out. Yeah, because I do. Uh, I mean, I trust people a lot more who will admit when they don't know things, right? Yeah. I mean, I have. I I, I told the story to someone else on one of the other interviews I did about years ago. I was at one of the top uh, acupuncturists, right? Around, really, mm -hmm. like top top acupuncturists. Um, were, were very well known in that. And you know, I've been to acupuncture tons of times and whatever. But this particular time, I did, did one needle and it really hurt, right? Really hurt. And I said, and I was like, oh, that hurts. And he goes, oh, yes, I can see that. And I said, I said, uh, um, why did that one hurt? And the others never do and everything. And he said, you yeah, have no idea. Yeah. And this is coming from a child, you know, and I was like, okay. And he just looked at him, okay. And we moved on. But I mean, it was so much better in many ways that he just said, I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I'm sorry. But, you know, and it doesn't matter how expert he was. He was honest to say, I don't know why that one hurt. My whole body tensed when you told that story, John, because I've had an acupuncture experience like that. And I just remember feeling like, oh, I don't know what's going on. And I'm freaking yeah. out. And my acupuncturist was like, you just need to breathe. I yeah, don't yeah. always know if I'm going to hit a spot that makes you <laughs> jump off the table. Just breathe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, I love that thinking, right? We, yeah. We're all human. Even as experts, you aren't always going to know everything. Yeah. And I think and it's such a trust builder, as you said, when you just say, let me think about that for a moment, you know, I don't really have, or, and then maybe go, you know, I don't really have the answer for that. I'm going to have to get back to you. Um, um, absolutely. The other thing you mentioned there was, was mindfulness. And I think, um, yeah, obviously, there's preparation, you should do all your preparation to your call planning and all of that. But I do think very few people take that moment to reset their minds before going, you know, whether it's on it, whether it's in person or on a Zoom call or whatever, but just take that moment to reset. Yes, this is something that, that's why sales process is important. That's why making sure that you really know what your job is going into each one of those conversations and having process and organization around it is important because then you'll begin to do just that. 
make sure you have 10 minutes before a call to transition from the last call you were on and get your head straight. And then make sure that you leave yourself 10 or 15 minutes for a debrief when you hang the phone mm -hmm. up to really think about, did I ask everything I should have? Did I make an assumption I need to go back and check in on? How did that go? And what can I do better next time? We need to give ourselves the space to do that. That's where the confidence builds. And that's what helps you to go do it better the next time around. Yeah, and I love that idea of the self-reflection, you know, giving yourself that period of time afterwards to to reflect and, and kind of on what happened and give yourself that self-reflection because as you said, that's where you can you can build um you can build real confidence and and it's almost like that self-reflection rather than wait for somebody else to give you that feedback, yeah. like give yourself that feedback because that's more empowering at the end of the day. It is, and I have many clients that, that are in coaching with me that will have a great sales call, and then I'll get an email and they'll say, I did everything right. I, I asked the uh, desired future state question. I figured out the decision-making team. I talked about money, even though that freaked me out. And then I forgot <laughs> to ask about timeline. Now what I'm gonna do? And I'm like, you know what? You always have the right to go back and just say, yeah. hey, there's a couple things I forgot to ask. Like, we, <laughs> that's, that's so okay. And that's just part of also realizing we do not have to be these robots and have everything perfect all the time in these conversations. Yeah. And in fact, I mean, sometimes you can look at that as a, as a, as a, as an advantage because now you have another chance to go back and make another contact with the person to say, Hey, listen, sorry, I'm, this is totally a remiss on, I overlooked this and I just wanted to check on that. And, and it keeps the dialogue flowing. And it's an entirely natural thing. It is entirely natural. We really believe at Win Without Pitching that the sale is the sample of what it's going to be like to work with you. Yes. And if you are leading in the sale and you are really being there in service of helping that client, you're going to set your team up to really lead in the engagement and knock it out of the park for all parties involved. And so the sale really is the sample. It's really an important moment to bring all, all of you, right? All of your best and mm -hmm. even your missteps. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's where the trust is built. The trust is built because it's, it's, let's face it, it's never going to be a perfect process at any stage. And as you know, in, in a sales situation, so many variables can come in. I mean, for instance, right now, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have had that experience where they've had fantastic sales um, cycles going along. And then, you know, this coronavirus just exploded onto the scene and knocked everything sideways and they have to regroup and maybe it's moved out or maybe it's been put on hold, whatever it is, but that you have to adjust to it. So there's always going to be something that you need to be able to flex with. Yeah. And I think one thing that often gets overlooked is your job to drive a next step. And mm -hmm. certainly when this pandemic hit and everything went silent and sideways for a while, I think many people in these sales conversations were afraid to like reach out because they didn't want to appear to be insensitive. And yeah. the reality is you need to be the one that continues to lead in these moments to check in to see how else might we be able to help aside from what we were mm -hmm. originally talking about, or can we get creative with pricing and maybe just open an hourly job in the meantime to get some work going yeah. and get some value created for you. So it really is on us as, as the sales leader out there to drive that next step and have those brave conversations because that's what those clients are looking for. They're looking for you to lead in these moments. Yeah, and actually it's funny you should say that because, uh, and I think the, the brave, but also, you know, just being practical. I mean, I was advising people that you've got to remember that coming out of this uh, pandemic there's going to be a dogfight among vendors right so you're going to be in a dogfight with your competitors uh, but the other thing is it's going to be a dogfight within your customer or your prospect uh, to get their initiative ahead of somebody else's because there, nobody's going to just you know um, switch on the faucet and let everything flow and all, all all projects are back on they're going to have to fight for it so the more work you do now in equipping your your prospect with the with the the tools to be able to persuade their organization that your initiative is the is the one that they should go with the better so it's definitely not a time to sit back nope you want to be that ally because you're right when things turn to normal or whatever that may look like in the future you want to be top of mind so and you want to be top of mind in that way that has been appropriate and relevant yeah. and helpful. Yeah, yeah. So you want to be building content and pushing your good thought leadership out there. You want to be checking in to see how it's going and how might we help. And you want to make sure that 
you're not afraid to have what may feel like a tough conversation because times are tough or budgets are tight. It's time to get creative and really dig mm -hmm. in with our clients. Yeah. And, at, and to be honest, at the end of the day, if you can't make a good argument as to why your product or service is, uh, is critical to them at this time, you know, you may want to go back and look at your product or service. Yeah, I think it's, it's a really important point, John. It's, it's you, it is a time to look at your, your positioning and your strategy. It's not a time to like switch mm -hmm. course for the sake of switching course. Sure. But I think that is what we're seeing by and large people coming in to get training and coaching around their positioning. What are they, what mm -hmm. are they going to be and who are they going to serve when this thing turns around? If they're losing in the market right now, it's a time to retool the business. And I think smart businesses are doing that and we'll see what happens, but I suspect they will be the ones that the ones that win in the end. Yeah. And there always is, as we know, historically there, there always is. And I think the other thing that if you look at, if you look at recent history, I, I came to the States 22 years ago from Ireland, right? And since I've been, and I came to Silicon Valley originally during the dot-com era, since I've been here, we've had the dot-com implosion. We've had 9-11, we've had the mm -hmm. financial crisis, now we have the pandemic and, and this, you know, the civil unrest. So it seems to me that there, there, there is more and more events happen you know, with, with shorter windows between them. So there's always going to be stuff happening. Therefore, you have to figure out how you can be one of those uh, people or one of those companies that can react, you know, positively when, when everything is going south. All of those events that you've mentioned, right, have created us, um, helped us to be more resilient than ever. Mm -hmm. And we certainly see it. We focus in on creative professionals, marketing, advertising, types right. of firms and there are so many good news stories out there right now it's just it's powerful to see because people are not going to take it laying down right even if they mm -hmm. have to retool the business they're yeah. they're going for it and they're going to make sure that they survive yeah and I, and I think that's and i think it's an important message in in resilience and and the fact is at the end of the day do you want to i always say to people do you want to outsource your destiny to fate or do you want to have some, do you want to play a hand in it? Um, you know, personally, I prefer to play a hand because I don't trust fate that much. Uh, but, but basically, if you just, if you set, sit back and just let things happen to you, uh, you know, then, you, then you're really taking your chances. Um, but if you try to say, okay, there's a lots of things that are outside of my control, but there are certain things that are inside my control. Yep, exactly. It's, um, I love that entrepreneurial spirit because entrepreneurs mm -hmm. have such a great appetite for risk. And so selling is fun. Running a business is fun. It's got all of its ups and downs. But if, you know, you think a bit, think about it in terms of a game, right? Selling is all about this polite battle of control and playing the game and creating tension. And it's the same when you're running your business, you're pushing yourself. You're, you're always working to see what more can I do or how should I pivot, right? you have mm -hmm. to be up for it in these times and it can be a tremendous opportunity. We shouldn't let this good crisis go. Yeah, no, absolutely. And just as a, as a final one, just an example on that, I was actually um, back in Ireland last week for, for a, a family thing that uh, I had to go to, but we came across a company who had um, completely retooled themselves. I think that they were like a video production company or something, mm -hmm. but they retooled themselves as a live streaming company now and they have more business than they can handle because they're live wow. streaming events, they're doing virtual meet, they're doing all sorts of stuff, high production values, really good, 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 good stuff. But they're, um, they've got more business than they can handle. They're actually doing better than they were before as their previous company. <laughs> I love it. What a good job of figuring out what their IP was and all the mm -hmm. expertise they had and just yeah. pivoting, right? Good yeah, for them. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, Shannon, this has been great. All of Shannon's uh, information will be in our contributor bio and, and links uh, where you can find out more. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you, what you do and how they can find out more. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah, it was great fun to talk with you today. So <laughs> I am the director of coaching at Win Without Pitching, which means that I work with clients in one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. We also have virtual workshops that we run, boot camps that we run. So there's a lot of ways to engage with us. And one thing you might want to do is check out our new YouTube channel. It's win without mm. pitching forward slash AMA, ask me anything.com and post a question. Blair, our founder and I are answering lots of questions every week and getting responses out there. It's a way for us to help during these challenging times in a way for you to kind of get a sense of what, how we think and what we're all about. So I would encourage you to do that. 
Yeah, and I will say, I, and as I always say at this stage, that people is, you've got to invest in yourself, right? I mean, don't wait for other people to invest in you. And coaching is something that you should look at. I did it, I have done it many times in my career. I have hired executive coaches for different things. Um, I guarantee you, you invest money in coaching or something for your favorite hobby, right? But your favorite hobby, guess what? Doesn't put bread on the table. So <laughs> maybe invest a little in coaching for your core, for your job. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's profound, the changes that happen for people yeah. when they do put some time and, and effort into themselves. It's good stuff. Absolutely. All right, Shannon, thank you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM, CEO for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.